This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I haven't had one of those Jerry Mallory nightmares in quite some time. You know, those Detroit Lions nightmares I would have during the season, sometimes during the offseason. It's been smooth selling, mostly dreams. Me winning the Super Bowl, catching the touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford, seeing Amir Abdullah run wild over the NFL like I'm predicting he'll do in year three, like I thought he'd do in year two, like he was kind of on pace for doing, you know, one game sample size in year two. It's been a lot of those dreams, but uh, this past week, uh, the nightmare came. Unfortunately, it was a streak, uh, not as impressive as Undertaker's streak. And we'll be talking about WrestleMania in a little bit. Sorry if you don't like wrestling. Uh, it, it, it was a good streak, though, of having successful thoughts about my Lions, dreams that were all, you know, peaches and cream, sunshine and roses until a few nights ago where I had the nightmare. And in fact, uh, we'll talk about it in just a second. And it's quite simple. Uh, Of all the draft picks, all the mock draft picks, there's one guy, okay? And there's been, I don't know, you name it, 20, 40 different guys you've seen consistently going to the Lions at 21. But there's one guy that I had uh, this nightmare that the Lions actually drafted. We'll talk about him. Of course, we're talking more NFL draft. I love uniforms. I love logos. So we got to talk about the uniforms and logos. And let's just be realistic, okay? Okay. Stafford needs to get paid. Don't play games. I'll compare him to some other uh, NFL quarterbacks, other teams and their situations, just to remind you how good we have it here. All that and more right here on the Hindsight 20. It's the Hindsight 20 Podcast. I'm your host, Jerry Mallory. I want to thank each and every one of you for listening. As always, proud member of thepridedetroit.com. Not thepridedetroit.com, but prideofdetroit.com. Proud member of the Detroit Sports Podcasting Network. Hey, subscribe, do your thing, go to prideofdetroit.com. It's great content, man. And uh, it's a lean year for Detroit sports. Let's let's be honest. Uh, Tigers, probably lowest expectations we've had. In quite some time, the Pistons, you know, we did a Pistons podcast last year, me and my cousin, Kevin, and um, it was a good year to have it because the hope and the promise looked good, Reggie and Andre, and just look at this team now. You sit here, you know, if you're anything like me, when they're playing the Brooklyn Nets or whoever they're playing, you're rooting for them to lose, and that's not a good feeling. It's like, let's be realistic, the only chance this team uh, will ever, you know, in the foreseeable future get a superstar is through the draft we're not you know new york uh and hey they're not that great either but you get my point we're not new york we're not la we're not chicago we're not getting a big name so lose maybe the uh the fixed nba lottery will fall in our favor you know maybe maybe the nba likes tom gorris maybe they're happy that we're moving back downtown keep losing you know we'll probably get like the 10th or 11th pick but Maybe that old fixed NBA lottery can fall in our favor just one time. Okay, so that's the Tigers, the Wings. Okay, talking about streaks ending, the playoff streak. Um, it's rough. It's very rough. And so it, Detroit sports, you know, even the Tigers, you know, opening days right now, whoop de doo um, And they may be good, but, you know, they're slowly on that decline. The big names are getting older and older. They're getting hurt. Um, now, if they stay healthy, this team may surprise, but I'll say the expectations for the Tigers this year is as low as it's been since the beginning of 2006. You know, no one thought 2006 would be 2006 until 2006 happened. So we're looking at about 10, 11 seasons. I would say this is the all time low in terms of expectations. Um, so lo and behold, our, our Lions are probably, you know, the uh, the biggest, most interesting, promising team, playoff team. Now, I said all that. This is probably the longest intro for Detroit Sports Podcast Network or Private Detroit ever. I apologize. Um, if you listen to the show, you know I will do those run-ons and like, hey, what was I talking about in the first place? But, hey, if you've been listening to this long, you know it, and maybe you maybe you enjoy it. Um, Detroit sports, it's, it's not at its peak right now. It's, it's some down uh, time, some lean years, but longest run-on, longest intro to uh, promoting a website ever but the Trey sports podcast network private trade getting it done consistently every single day so uh proud member of both of those outfits 
So let's talk uniforms. And I am a uh, a big uniform guy, a big logo guy, probably more than the average fan. Um, I'm one of those guys. I pick up NBA 2K. I play it on the Xbox. And I, what I love about 2K is its um, ability to be customized. Okay, it's customability. Is, is that a word? I don't know. You tell me. But I do love the fact that you can, you know, you can add expansion teams and you can do uniforms and logos and, you know, you can move guys. You know, Madden and EA, to me, they, they kind of missed the mark on that. They, Madden and EA kind of remind me of Apple, where Apple just kind of, and I hey, I have an iPhone, so, you know, and, and an iPad where well, the wife does. So I'm not just anti-Apple, but Apple's like, hey, it's our stuff, you know, not going to be as... Uh, free range you're not gonna let you do as much that's kind of madden and in 2k is more like android custom customizing you know you can do your thing you can you can you know make a new logo you can do what you want which i like and it's probably part of the nfl as well nfl having restrictions on what they want you to do but even the nfl 2k 2k5 you know so many years ago was customizable you can add different songs for first downs etc etc so i'm a big logo uniform guy as it is there's uh, rumors maybe the Pistons will be getting new, new uniforms. Tigers, Red Wings, you don't touch them. We know that, right? So the Lions, lo and behold, um, the rumors were true. There's been a partial leak of their uniforms. And so far, so good. I talked about it briefly. My issue with the current uniform as it stands is uh, the squiggliness of the letters. Okay, the line looks like it's kind of cursive. I know some people say, hey, that, you know, they're, they're, the, the words are running. I don't care. It looks unprofessional to me. It looks too, you know, squiggly. It doesn't really, I'm not trying to be all macho, misogynistic guy, but it's not a real manly football feeling type of font. All right. I think everything has its place. I'm not some, uh, you know, oh, I'm the ultimate man's man. I'm not Ron Swanson. All right. From Parks and Rec, but football does have a place. And I, I will say that a football logo should look manly. It should look, you know, rough and tough. All right. And I don't think our current logo does. Now the new one, it you know, it uh, you know, it, it it doesn't have hair on it, like chest hair or something. But it, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Okay, the squiggliness is gone. It's uh, it kind of puts me in the mindset of the Vikings. And by the way, I love the Vikings uh, logo, and I love their lettering, their whole deal. You know, I would you know be glad that we kind of copied them. Now some people don't like it. Some people have issues with it. The uh, the letter N and S and et cetera, et cetera. You're not going to please everybody, but my official stamp is uh, of approval. I really do like what they did. I love the change in lettering. It's not squiggly. It doesn't look like cursive. It doesn't look unprofessional or unfinished, or it doesn't look like a 10-year-old did it. Those are the feelings I got with uh, what what we're working with now. And then you go to the color schemes. I guess it's a, a slight change in blue. Um, I probably honestly, I don't know, maybe I would have noticed it, um, but someone on, I think it was, yeah, probably Detroit message boards, or the comment section of one of the posts, we're talking about how it's, you know, they saw the difference. It's a little bit darker shade of blue. That's cool. I'm all for that. I think we were a little bit darker blue back in the day, so it's kind of getting closer to our throwbacks. Now, what the thing I love is the the numbers are they're they're flat. They're not outlined, and the black is gone. So you got this this blue which is a darker blue, closer to throwback. And then the letter, it's a gray, you know, silver, if you want to call it, but really a gray letter with no outline. I think that's sleek, man. That's with, uh, that, that, that's in line with the Raiders who's got the black with the silver. There's no outline on those numbers. There's no secondary or third colors. I think the Lions had like the white and it was outlined in black. And some teams even have three things going on. I love that. Just the flat one color. It, it, it goes smooth. It looks sleek, man. Very nice on your uh your jersey now i'm not a fashion expert my wife actually is a fashion blogger so i probably should bring her in on this i did ask her about it. so what do you think about it? and she gave the uh the stamp of approval as well so um and this is based off that rumored leak online that um from the season ticket holders so a really smart twitter user went ahead and and changed the contrast and you can see a little bit more of what's going on looks like the color rush might be a, a a gray all gray all silver however you want to word it some people don't like that but for me right now i do like what i am seeing we'll see more uh that's april 13th thursday i'm going to try to be in the building check it out uh, and maybe even buy a shirt or something. We'll see. Those jerseys are expensive, man. Now, I don't know if the NFL is listening. Shh, I'm going to say this really low, but you know, there's been a time or two where I, I, I'll, I'll buy the knockoff, you know, the Chinese knockoff you can get online because, hey, listen, I spent a lot of money on the NFL, okay? I've, I've held season tickets. 
I, uh, you know, I'll download the Red Zone, the NFL Network, all those things above and beyond. You know, I'll I'll pay my ticket prices. But, uh, you know, there's been a time or two I might have a Matthew Stafford jersey in my closet that may or may not have originated from China, that may or may not look like an authentic, and that may or may not cost mm, about uh, about a tenth of what you're going to pay. So, you know. You know, th- those guys overseas may need a little bit more time to to uh, incorporate the new logo uh, and the new jersey. And so, uh, sorry, NFL, I know how you feel about it. You say it's taking money away, yada, yada. Some of you may be offended by that, but hey, man, it, it is what it is. So that's my little spiel in the uniforms. I do like what we have going on so far. Now, moving on, uh, pretty good podcast is uh, Hindsight 20 by Jerry Mallory. No, seriously, a pretty good podcast, Albert Breer. I get a chance to listen to him when I can. And um, he had Bob Quinn on this past was it, uh, Thursday or something like that. Whenever it was, got a chance to listen. And it was some pretty good things, some insightful um, point of views and, and some insightful takes from Bob Quinn. Uh, one thing I gathered, he seems as though he uses Caldwell as that voice of reason. So that was pretty cool. Uh, he kind of hinted toward the fact that you know, he's kind of wanted to maybe cut a guy or trade or make a like a brash reaction, you know, and Quinn uh, listened to call will kind of slowed him down and said, hey, you know, which is cool because uh, at the end of the day, you know, no matter what Quinn believes, he's still a little green, which he admitted. And so uh, that, that was a cool aspect. Then the topic came up about Matthew Stafford and the contract extension. Now, the first thing that uh, he mentioned was, well, it takes two sides. You know, the the smallest bit of me was like, hmm, is that uh, Stafford kind of, you know, balking at re-signing with Detroit? Don't think that's the case. It does take two sides, though. Um, And so they'll get something done. These quarterbacks usually don't jump ship like that. You know, you got Kirk Cousins. It's kind of a tricky situation, but it's a lot of money to be had. You know, it's $150 potentially. And uh, so don't play games. You go and sign that contract. So. What I did was look at the the best quarterback situations in the NFL over the next three years. You know, it's a five-year contract. I won't go all the way five years because then you're kind of throwing out a guy like Brady who supposedly is going to play another seven years, but you get my drift because a lot of people are saying, oh, Stafford, don't pay him. And then, you know, 97-1 at one point saying let Stafford walk, get some draft picks and, you know, draft Deshaun Watts, all these different theories and rumors. And so – I kind of want to paint a picture of what we have versus what everyone else has. And uh, so here, in my opinion, over the next three years, the best quarterback positions uh, or situations, excuse me, in the NFL. So um, and we'll see where the Lions go and end up. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see there's quite a few teams that would love to be in a spot of paying Stafford six years over uh, over uh, 150 million over six years. So I think Green Bay is number one. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, arguably the best in the league, you know, probably Brady, but uh, Brady's two. All right. I'm not going to, you know, build up too much suspense. Uh, Rodgers being a little bit younger over the next three years, he probably will, you know, still stay where he is. You know, he's kind of in that, in his prime. He probably won't get much worse. Brady, although he's not really showing signs of it, he is, you know, 40. And um, he he could start to see that decline. So I've got Rodgers number one, and then I've got uh, I've got Tom Brady and New England number two. Now number three is going to surprise you over the next three years. I've got Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Huge Jameis Winston fan coming out of college. So far in the league, he's really proved me right. When I look at quarterback situations too, I'm factoring in you know just the quarterback by themselves and not the supporting cast. So. You know, I really do like Derek Carr in Oakland situation. You know, you might say, well, Derek Carr, you know, you probably got to put him over Jameis Winston. But I look at that that offensive line, which helps him so much. All right. And so I've got him at number four, uh, but but not number three. I don't think Winston has as much to work with, but he's getting you know a lot done. He's got the big receiver in Evans. You know, the running game his first year was pretty solid with Martin, but the next year, you know, and their offensive line is pretty good. But, um, you know, so that's kind of my spiel. And next after that, at number five, I've got Atlanta. You know, Matt Ryan, you know, he proved some things, man. Getting to the Super Bowl, so close to winning it. Um, I'm not putting it really on him as the loss. I, I look at their coaching. I look at some of the decisions they made. You know, Kyle Shanahan, their coordinator. I really like what they have going on. They do have the benefit. And that's the thing, too, man. I, 
And I'm going to get to Stafford. He's coming up pretty soon. The more and more I talk about these quarterback situations, these top quarterbacks all have something that Stafford, or most of them, um, have one or the other, if not both, that Stafford really hasn't had consistently. Offensive line in the running game. So just imagine if Quinn's vision of beefing up this line works and, and, and the running game works. You know, I, I don't think we give Stafford the amount of credit sometimes he deserves. So after that, I do have Dallas. Um, you know, as, as as good as Dak Prescott, look, we know the run game helped and the offensive line helped. He's so young, so efficient. Um, I've got him right there. Then right after that is Detroit. It's three teams kind of lumped together, Detroit, Seattle, and Carolina in terms of uh, their three quarterbacks. Now, if this was a year ago, it would be kind of crazy because Cam Newton was coming off that MVP year and Russell Wilson was still looking phenomenal. Now, these guys are still good. But um, they have had a luxury of better supporting cast than Stafford, which is why I have Stafford above both of them. Um, Russell Wilson, a little bit of his shine taking off this year with the uh, departure of Marshawn Lynch and with that offensive line looking horrible. Then you've got Cam Newton, who, you know, he looked bad last year, but I'm giving him, uh, you know, a second year to see can he adjust? Can he fix? Can he get better protection? And so Stafford is is smack dab at the front of this line, man. I mean, it's only a few guys I have in the next three years. I really feel as though it's a better quarterback situation. So, you know, I mentioned, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's seven. I mentioned eight, nine. That's 19. There's 20. Three, did I do that right? Oh, I think so. There's 23 other teams, dude, where I just feel as though they would love to be in a situation where instead of whatever they have going on at quarterback right now, they could be paying Stafford six years, $150 million. Now, the Colts, I probably should put them in there as well. I am not uh, as high on that, you know, luck is overrated spiel that you hear a lot of people talking about. I think he is good. It's almost, you know, when people get so good, then people call them overrated, and they almost become underrated. It's weird. And maybe luck is kind of in that mind frame or that, you know, in, in that thought for many people. Um, he is, for me, it's like he gets, you know, supposedly smart football. People dog him so much. It's like, wait a minute, guys, this, this is a very good quarterback. And so you could probably put him in the mix. Now, some of these young guys, Carson Wentz, you know, you might say, hey, Philly probably feels though they have a better quarterback situation. Golf probably not, but you know, one year, you know, we've seen a lot of hot rookies. We've seen your Vince Youngs and your Robert Griffin the third. So I'm not putting any rookie from last year as a better quarterback situation in Stafford. I'm just not doing it. So there's 23 uh, other teams, man. You know, you look over there with Chicago and they got Sanchez and you know Glennon. You look at the New York Jets. All right, you look at everything that the LA Rams gave up to get. Goff, you hope that maybe he can be something. I can go on and on and on. Look at Miami. They've got tons of question marks. All right, Buffalo. You know, uh, Arizona's got, got an aging quarterback situation. Th- there's a lot going on, man. You've got uh, Kansas City, another aging situation. Cleveland, it's Cleveland, all right? Jacksonville. Uh, even New Orleans, you know, they got an aging quarterback situation. Um, the Steelers... Only reason I didn't put Big Ben up there because there's rumors of him maybe hanging him up this year or next year. So aging quarterback situation. Tampa Bay, uh, or excuse me, Tennessee is interesting because Mariota, you kind of argue because he really looked good, but there's some injury concerns. Plain and simple. The, the vast majority of the teams, uh, is a vast majority of teams would love to be in this situation. Don't be silly, all right? Well, I'm not really talking to Quinn because he's not going to be. He's going to get that Brinks truck. He's going to drive it wherever Stafford lives. He's going to back it up right in his house and pay him. I know he is. I have confidence. But you as a fan base, don't be silly. Don't start poo-pooing this. Don't start, well, let's just start over and instead of giving him the yada, yada, yada. Stafford's a good quarterback. Stafford's borderline great. He looked really good last year. Still young, scratching the surface, tons of accomplishments. Has not had the supporting cast that a lot of these quarterbacks have had and still looks on par with many of them. Imagine what he can do with an improved offensive line, with a run game, etc. Six years, $150 million, pay the man. So Bob Quinn says it takes two sides. I feel as though his side is ready. I think Stafford's side will be ready as well. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, let's divulge into that nightmare, all right? That one guy at 21. There's a lot of options. And a lot of them don't scare me too much. Eh, Charles Harris, a little bit, but it's not him. There's one guy, though, that I've seen a time or two that absolutely scares me. We'll talk about that and much more, so stick around on the High Side 20. 
Jerry Mallory here on the High Sight 20 Podcast. If you want your ad to be placed on our show, send me an email. We'll make it happen. Hindsight20podcast at gmail.com. All right, thanks for sticking around. Second half of the Hindsight 20 or last third, however you want to view it. Before we get into that nightmare, let's talk about WrestleMania. Give me five minutes, all right? If you're not big into wrestling, maybe I can make it entertaining for you, nonetheless. And if you're just add opposed to it, you can skip about five minutes and we'll be back on the uh, on the wrestling tip, if you will. WrestleMania, it's uh, the granddaddy of them all, as they call it. Um, overall, my opinions on the show, it was, it was, you know, like as I was watching it, I was not as enthralled or entertained as I had hoped. But now that I'm reflecting on it, um, it, it was solid. If I'm giving it a grade, I don't know why I'm a teacher and it's a student. I, I, I go, I probably go B minus ish. So still not crazy about it, but it was entertaining. Now, uh, it's, it's long, dude. You know, I didn't watch the stuff beforehand, the intercontinental match, the, uh, Rob Gron- and Okay. Rob Gron- Kraus- Gron- Gronkowski. All right. I should pronounce your name wrong. You know, this guy, you know, the Patriots didn't need you to win a Super Bowl, but Jerry Mallory needed you to win his fantasy Super Bowl, okay? Man, I had a team of all teams. Now, there was some risk assessed to this. Now, I came in third place in my league despite having Adrian Peterson, who gave me nothing, Amir Abdullah, who gave me nothing, DeAndre Hopkins, who gave me nothing, and the aforementioned Rob Gronkowski, who is healthy enough to help Mojo Riley win Battle Royals, but can't get it done when I needed him the most in the playoff stretch, all right? I had a good team, to say the least. My man Stafford was helping me out, Jameis Winston, Mike Evans, uh, Matt Forte, um, traded for LaShawn McCoy at a certain point, uh, Gronkowski and Delaney Walker at some point. You know, I I had a really solid team, man. Uh, Minnesota's defense really was helping me out early on, all right? But uh, just not enough to get it done. So anyways, back to WrestleMania. I, like I said, it's so long. I didn't watch the beginning stuff. Started off, you know, at seven, you know, the, the real opener. Pretty good opening match. You know, uh, Shane McMahon, the king of the big bumps. AJ Styles, a little disappointing. You know, it was like, for me, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, Sami Zayn, guys I like, they just didn't really have anything for them, you know? And so this whole AJ Styles McMahon thing was kind of like, uh, we got to give them something. You know, Samoa Joe shows up. He's this enforcer for Triple H, but, you know, that got lame after so long. And he's not really in a, a significant program. It's sad. You know, you bring him in. Like, and I guess everyone can't get shot right up to uh, a super relevant feud. So uh, the after Raw, you know, after WrestleMania Raw should be interesting. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a Samoa Joe, Seth Rollins program. That should be uh, that should be fun if that's the case. Uh, Kevin Owens and Jericho, solid match. Not as good as I had hoped. And uh, it was good to see, you know, a lot of times they don't like to give Hills clean wins, man. I I do appreciate that, all right? It was a clean win. Mostly all the wins were clean, which is cool. You know, a Hill can win sometime, you know, without mischievous or devious ways, all right? So uh, putting the strap on Kevin Owens, was it was kind of cool. I was rooting for Jericho. I like Jericho. I would have liked to seen him, you know, stick in that U.S. championship, you know, scheme, scheme. You know, situation. I just think throwing the strap on Owens means he's not going to be in a, a main event program anytime soon. I would have, I would have loved to seen uh, Lesnar and Kevin Owens after all, but you know we'll, we'll see. We'll see what they have in store. Maybe they're really building up Roman Reigns, especially he's officially the big dog of the yard now, right? Um, I didn't. I don't really care about the the women's four way match. I'm sorry. Uh, raw is a superior women's division, but um, just didn't really care about it. Now the Hardy Boys coming back. That was cool. You know, there were rumors about it. Um, there's going to be this whole thing. Is it going to be the broken Matt Hardy, which everyone loves, which everyone's all, you know, big on. So it's cool seeing them with the straps. The tag team uh, situation with Raw is really strong, really, really strong. I'm hoping that uh, I hope the first guys up will be Cesaro and uh, and Sheamus. I hope those are the first two they get into a little feud with. Uh, it will be fun to watch. And, of course, the New Day always there. They're entertaining, but they're a good tag team as well. Biggie and Kofi Kingston. Now, uh, John Cena and Nikki Bella, Miz and Maurice, 
you know, I really did. I really did enjoy what the Miz did. The whole mocking of uh, Total Divas. It's cool, man. I, I remember watching Miz when he was on the Real World in New York, like 15 years ago. This shelter kid. You know, I don't think he ever met any black people in real life. This whole just super shelter guy that loved wrestling and. His wrestling name was The Miz. Like, you know, all of us growing up kind of, we gave ourselves a wrestling name. I was Gerald Star Time, you know, and I was all into it. So it's cool seeing that maturation. You know, I don't hate John Cena like everyone else. And I'm almost like, it's the whole Andrew Luck thing. You hate somebody so much, everyone does. I start to kind of like them. Like, dude, he's not that bad, but don't really like him. You know, I just don't hate him like everyone. And the uh, the whole proposal seemed very staged and fixed. You know, buddy, I watched it with, saw it coming a mile away and, uh, sure enough, there it was. I was disappointed that Randy Orton uh, got the win over Bray Wyatt. You know, Bray just got the strap. You know, he's over. He gets, you know, he gets love. He gets pop. And, um, you know, Orton is just redundant, man. You know, I, I really didn't see the benefit of that. You know, I, I wanted to see a longer run with Bray. So we'll wait and see what happens after that. Seth Rollins, uh, I just didn't really enjoy that match versus Triple H. You know, the intro, we knew we were going to be something special. And that was cool. You know, it looked like he came out to a bunch of rent cops though. That is that the best cop uniform that Florida has? Like, you know, it'd been nice to have them in a nice black, like a SWAT team looking thing. They all look like a bunch of Paul Blart mall cops with their white short sleeve shirts. But again, that's just me being the kind of fashion dude that I can turn into sometime. But the match, you know, good. You know, you got to give Rollins that win. And uh, dude, Triple H just looks ripped. Apparently, steroids and HDH only applies to the wrestlers and not Vince McMahon's son-in-law. Clearly, he has to be on some type of juice. Uh, Lesnar-Goldberg was predictable. We knew it would be a short match. I was surprised it wasn't the main event, but it made more sense considering it was going to be a short match. And then when we consider the fact that, uh, you know, we end up seeing the last match for The Undertaker. But uh, this wasn't a surprise. We already knew how it was being built. We know Goldberg was uh, pretty much on his way out. And Lesnar's last year of his deal with WWE uh, was supposed to be uh, him having a, a longer workload. So it was cool seeing him get that. I did enjoy the six-pack challenge, seeing Naomi and, and the Glow Squad do their thing, especially in her home uh, town of Orlando. And then, like we said, Undertaker, Roman Reigns. Lo and behold, Roman Reigns is third straight main event you're gonna keep shoving keep shoving keep shoving keep shoving him down 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 our throats that's fine again another guy i probably don't hate as much as most but uh you know we we didn't know if it was undertaker's last match or not but then it became very clear it all added up like okay this is the main event and then good old jr man and that was cool jim ross you know classic announcer especially considering you know uh the the tragedy of him losing his wife just a few weeks uh, earlier comes out and uh like okay this is okay you know you kind of sense it. it's the main event jim ross is out here this this might be it for the undertaker and in true fashion you know this guy undertaker's a pro his whole career he put guys over okay he didn't he didn't mind where hogan would refuse the job to people and austin had issues with it and Shawn michaels had issues with it undertaker he put kane over numerous times you know, mankind, he always did. You got to respect him for that. So we knew he was going to go out the same way that he kind of held his career, putting guys over, you know, and that's the tradition, man. Uh, the OGs of wrestling, that's how they, they go out on their backs. That's the way you're supposed to do it. And he did it. Uh, it was awesome. You know, I'm glad I got to witness it. And uh, man, you know, just the icon, a legend of the game. So uh, the Raw after WrestleMania is always interesting. It's the reset. You know, the reset button is hit. New angles, a couple of new surprises. You know, we'll see uh, Finn Balor maybe be coming out. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. All right. Thank you for allowing me to talk about wrestling. For those of you that like wrestling, kudos to you for listening and enjoying. For those of you that don't, uh, welcome back. All right. You can now get off of, um, I don't know, maybe you're scrolling on your phone, whatever you're doing. Back to football and back to my nightmare. So there's been a lot of guys rumored to go to the Lions. Some I'm not crazy about. I'm not crazy about Charles Harris. I wouldn't really be happy about that. Taco Charlton, not crazy about him going to the Lions. All right. Don't really want a cornerback at 21. All right. So Marlon Humphrey and uh, I've seen a Dory Jackson and uh, even maybe Kevin King. Not crazy about it. I don't really want it to happen. However, there is a guy that uh, I, I, I just straight up had nightmares about, man. It's it's David Joku, all right? Tight end Miami. If the Lions were to pick him, 
that would probably be the one guy I would I would just I would kind of bash the pick. I would be upset with. I'm not that guy. You know, for the most part, these guys and you and they they get drafted. I'm I'm happy that they bring them in because number one, I'm like, well, our front office knows more than me clearly, and I'll probably really think that now that Quinn's in in place. So if they like a guy, you know, you're cool with it. The last pick I was probably just straight up upset with was. Eric Ebron, and even after being upset initially, I started to rationalize the pick. David Joku, uh, first off, it, yes, we know, tight end. Uh, now, if it was O.J. Howard, I'd be fine. I think with O.J. Howard, you're getting a top 10 talent too hard to pass up on. Now, my issue with Joku, there are several. How much of an upgrade would he be over Ebron? Number one. Um, number two, if he's there and we pick him, I know we've passed up a guy or two that I just think would just would, would probably be considered better, you know, would be a bigger need being filled, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, his measurables were, I mean, they were great, man. You know, this guy looks the part. He looked even better at his pro day. But um, I'm not giving up on Ebron. I've seen uh, improvements from Ebron year after year. Now, it's his fourth year. They have not picked up his option yet. So, you know, it's kind of up in the air. So we may need another tight end and Daniel Fells isn't it. But my other issue is it's so many athletic, you know, like the freak tight end this year. There are plenty. You've got Evan Ingram who you can get later and Adam Shaheen, you know, Michael Roberts. There's, I just feel as though I, like, and even with Ebron, we picked them. I'm like, dude, okay, I get it. But you couldn't just wait and got, I don't know, Jason Morrow, Austin Safari, and Jenkins. Now, Ebron's been better than those guys already. I get that. And I'm not going to go on the whole, well, we could have drafted, blah, 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 blah. We know. We know there are some really good guys we could have drafted instead of Eric Ebron. But this whole Joku nightmare, it stems from me. Like, how much better is Joku than Evan Ingram? How much better is Joku than Michael Roberts? How much better? He's probably considerably better than Michael Roberts. They're, they're different. O.J. Howard kind of sets himself apart, all right? It's O.J. Howard and everybody else. And if I'm at 21 and I've already got a, a pretty good tight end still under contract, I'm not drafting a tie, another tight end with all these holes that need to be filled that falls into the in everybody else category, all right? If it's O.J., fine, but I don't care that Joku's number two, all right? I'm, he's still a part of the and everybody else category. So of all the names I've seen, he's the one that, oh man, whew, I just get some nightmares about. So we're going to skip fan speak this week and close the show with uh, a four round mock draft by yours truly for the Lions. I've said it before. I'll do it again. Just tooting my own horn. Um, I have, I've been pretty good at predicting Lions draft picks the last five or six years. If you can get one guy in a draft, You've done well because it's hard to do. There's been some years where I've gotten one or even two. And so just to name off my resume. So as I give you this mock draft, just put a little weight in it, man. I've 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 got a little formula. I may have a, you know, not like, oh, I've got sources, but I, I, I've got my ways of trying to, you know, correctly predict these. And it's not just completely guessing. I have a little a method or two. I've got a person or two I may reach out to the whole nine yards. Um, but some of my uh some of my uh accomplishments i don't know however you want to put it um and dominican sue that was kind of a no-brainer uh javit best i'm just naming guys of the last few years that i've predicted mock to go to the lions before the draft and they did it uh ryan broyles uh kellen moore i believe was an undrafted free agent i think i mocked him to the seventh round that year i'm taking credit for that in the last two years lakin tomlinson and graham glasgow so um, there you have it. We'll start with the fourth round and work our way back to the uh, first round. So starting off, we're going to go ahead and uh, say fourth round is tight end. All right. Michael Roberts from Toledo. Uh, big Michael is uh, he looks pretty good, man. He's got big hands. He's shown some athleticism. They've shown interest. They were at the pro day. He's the pick right now. If he's there in the fourth round that I feel more comfortable about. Like out of all my predictions, I think I, I feel more comfortable about him than anyone else. So Michael Roberts, tight end from Toledo. Now going to the third round, um, you know, I'm going back and forth, you know, thinking about positions of need, um, thinking about, you know, you know, a, a number of factors. I've got Alex uh, uh, Anzalone from from Florida. Now, 
Some are saying, hey, is, is that a bit of a reach? I don't know, man. I, I like the guy. He feels a need. Um, he brings some athleticism to the fore. Um, I, I don't think it's that much of a need, uh, of a stretch. Uh, some people are thinking he can be available in the fourth round. I mean, it's possible, but, I mean, that's my pick, man. I, I'm going with it right now. He feels a need, especially if you hear my next two picks. Um, you know, they, they didn't. They didn't address. They didn't address that linebacker spot, and we know we need one. So uh, the linebacker from Florida, Annex Anzalone, was uh, he's my guy in the third round. He's got some good size, and um, you know you like his production. Um, his forty time was okay, and his bench press didn't really, you know, all those things didn't really speak to you. But at the end of the day. Uh, the production at the college level is there. And so uh, I'm going with him now. Second round, a guy that's going to fall. They've shown some interest. They met with him. They talked with him. Didn't have a good combine. Um, and so uh, they're sticking in with the Gators, man. Back-to-back Gators picks. Caleb Brantley. All right. They flat out, they need that three-tech, man. You know, we've brought in some guys. But, you know, hopefully Hill, the new signing, could, could be something. But we don't know. Um, that three-tech pass rusher guy is a big need. And uh, Brantley has just been falling and falling and falling. So at one point, he was considered a first-round pick. I've seen some mocks with him still going in the first round. But it kind of reminds me of Ashawn, man. You know, a guy that you saw mocked in a lot of first-round picks. And then, you know, he just fell. And uh, we'd be happy to bring him in. And in the first round, another guy who's fallen. Now, the combine, he was sick. Then the pro day, he was injured. So people are like, man, you know, dude, you know, are are there excuses going on? What's going on with this guy? We already knew the measurables wouldn't be there. But... Tape doesn't lie. And um, because of the measurables not being there, he's going to fall. However, Derek Barnett from Tennessee, you already know how I feel about this guy. I think very highly of them. I know how much Quinn loves the trenches. And he'll look at 10 plus sacks, 10 plus sacks, 10 plus sacks in the conference that he did it in. And he won't pass them up. All right. We've got about three weeks for the draft. Things could change. We all know that. But as of right now, those are my... You know, that's my mock. Those are the guys I'm predicting the Lions will draft. Not who I would draft, but who I'm predicting they draft. So first round, Derek Barnett, defensive end, Tennessee. Second round, Caleb Brantley, defensive tackle from Florida. Third round, Alex Anzalone, linebacker from Florida. And fourth round, Michael Roberts, Toledo tight end. It's been a fun show, guys. I share with you my nightmares. We talked about WrestleMania and encouraged you. Don't fret. Don't complain. Let Stafford get that money. We'll be back next week, same time, same day, doing what we do. As always, I can be found on Twitter, at Jerry Mallory NFL, on PrivateTroit.com, and of course, right here. So check me out next week, and thanks for listening.